Hey, this is the first of a few videos that are going to be about components and how we can join them together using joints to create assemblies. In this first video, I'm just going to talk about components and um, so far all the ways that we've been creating things in Fusion 360 is by making bodies. So we could uh, create a sketch and extrude it and we'd end up with a body inside a bodies folder. We're going to go backward and say that we never start that way. <laughs> We're always going to start by creating a component. Why? Uh, well, we, we want components because anytime we come up with a design that has multiple parts to it that connect to each other in some way, either they move in relationship to each other or they are two parts, maybe they're two 3D printed parts that snap together, uh, whatever it is, each of those separate parts really should be considered separate components that are being connected together in an assembly of parts. We'll talk about assemblies in the next video, but for now, it always makes sense to create a component and start working from there, even if you think that the thing you're designing will only ever be a single part. It's just not worth uh, f skipping that step. Um, it is possible to turn a body into a component after the fact, but it's not ideal. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the new component command here, and I'm gonna make a lollipop. So I'll make a component called stick. Now, one of the things to notice is it says the parent has already been selected. Well, the only thing selected here is this component. So this is actually a component. Uh, that's the symbol for components, this solid um, cube. And so it's interesting that we've been working with components all along. Let's just uh, hit OK here and we'll see what happens. That icon changed a little bit. And what it's telling me is that it's a component that contains components. So uh, this is our root component, it's always been there, and the kinds of things that we've seen inside that root component are the origin, we've seen a bodies folder, we've seen a uh, sketches folder. So components can contain all of those things. They have their own origin, they can contain bodies, they can contain sketches, they can also contain other components. So that's what we've done here. We've taken our root component and we've said within that component, there's a new one called stick. What does it have in it? Well, it only has its own origin right now, and I can turn that on to see. It's actually the same as the other origin, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so now what I wanna do is um, within this component, I wanna do some work. And this is showing me that the stick component is the active one, and um, that's any, any work that I do is going to take place inside this stick component. First thing I'm gonna do to make my stick is just uh, do what I'm always trying to avoid, which is using these primitives, but this is just the simplest way to, to show you how components work. So I'll hit cylinder here, and I will make something that looks sort of like a lollipop stick. Now, I'm, the spoiler alert, I'm gonna turn a, an option off here. So it should just turn up, turn up gray. So what I've done is I created a body. And if we look, there's a bodies folder here. It contains body one. This looks just like what we've been doing. And it's all contained within this component. Now, if you look down here uh, in the timeline, we've got one operation, which was creating that cylinder. And that's it, I'm done with my stick. So now what I'm gonna do is create a second component called the candy. And what I can do is I can choose new component, but if you look, the parent right now it says it's selected. The only thing selected over here is stick. Now, do I want uh, candy to be a subcomponent of stick? That doesn't really make sense. They're two totally separate things. They're kind of peers to each other. So they should be at the same level. So what I really wanna do is uh, not choose that. I wanna choose my root component as the parent. Now, the easiest way to do that is, uh, I'm gonna cancel here, is to just make sure anytime you create a component, double check which component is active. And if the root component is active, when I choose new component, I don't have to worry about it. I know that it's gonna be created at that root level. So I'll call this one candy. And now you can see there's a stick, and then right beside it, there's a candy, not within it. So in this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create a cylinder, and I'll create it on this front work plane and I'll just uh, put it around here. And um, I don't know, extrude it a bit, hit okay. 
And now what I've noticed is it didn't really do what I wanted, right? It just extruded it in one direction. So this is a good opportunity to see how multiple operations that happen here, multiple features show up in the timeline just for this command, this component. So as I go to extrude and move this out a bit and hit OK, you can see there's a second operation, a second feature down here in the design history. The first one was creating the cylinder. The second one was creating the uh, extrude. Where's all the stuff related to the stick? Well, it doesn't matter because we're, we have the candy as the active component. So this only shows the candy timeline. This is the point where looking at the inspect menu, we can see there's a feature here called component color cycling toggle clumsy name, but we click on that. And now the components are color coded. Let me activate my root component again so that I can see everything. And uh, what I've got is an orange salmon colored uh, component, which is the candy component. We've got a green one called stick. And so the color coding in the browser matches what we see over here. It also matches what we see in the design history. So if you look, the main component is blue. And then the design history, the first thing that happened was I this little cube symbol we recognize as a component symbol. And so that feature right there is I created a component. When I click on it, it highlights the component I created, highlights the name over here, and I can see that that name shows up down here in the design history. I created a stick component. Within that stick component, I have a green feature here, so that must have been related to the stick component, and that was where I created my cylinder. Then back in the blue component, which was the root, I created a new one called candy. And that's a salmon colored um, component. And so everything else in the design history happened within that candy component. So we've got each, each one of these has their own little world with bodies and sketches and an origin and other things that can go in here, including other components. Why would that make sense to have components within a component? Well, if you have something really complex, in this example, uh, I've got a wheel and axle assembly. And uh, let me just turn on a section view so you can see what's happening here. There are, um, there are bearings, there are spacers, there's an axle, there's all sorts of parts to this. But some of those parts are conceptually, I guess, related to each other. So I've got a component here called wheel and bearings. And if I open that component, it's got an origin, it's got uh, a joints folder, which we'll talk about soon, but it also has other components. And you can see its component icon uh, shows multiple components within there, just like our root component does. So within, within there, I've got a bearing spacer, I've got a bearing and another bearing, and I've got the wheel. So, um, this is uh, a, a simple example, but if you had a bicycle, you can imagine that it's it's logically it logically makes sense to break the bicycle into different assemblies, uh, which have assemblies within them. And we'll talk about assemblies in the next video.